Hi there, and welcome to this psychology webinar looking at the ideographic and nomothetic approaches to research. In this evening's webinar, three different things I'd like to go through. I'd like to start by looking at the definitions and provide you with some examples of what we mean by ideographic and nomothetic approaches. Uh, then we'll take a look at the types of questions that could come up in A-level psychology. And in the final part, we'll look at how you might structure an essay should an essay on ideographic and nomothetic approaches come up in your exam. So let's take a start by looking at these, uh, these definitions of ideographic and nomothetic approaches. So the term ideographic is when psychologists focus on individual uh, human beings and emphasize the unique personal experience of human nature. Okay? Now it's useful for the ideographic and nomothetic approach to know where the word originates from. And the term ideographic comes from the Greek word idios, which means own or private. If we compare that with a nomothetic approach, psychologists who take a nomothetic approach are generally concerned with establishing general laws that they can apply based on the study of large groups of people. And again, if we take a look at what the word means, it comes from the Greek word nomos, which just means law. So you've got these two distinct areas uh, of research in psychology, focusing on the individual, ideographic, I for individual, and focusing on a large group, which is your nomothetic approach. Let's attach some examples to these to make them feel a bit more real. So if we think about the typical methods that are used within ideographic research, they will typically include things like case studies, unstructured interviews, thematic analysis, okay? Now, all of those methods provide us with a really in-depth insight into individual behavior, okay? And the ide ideographic approach, unlike the nomothetic approach, is not trying to general, uh, create generalized laws that they can apply elsewhere, okay? Now, if we look at one of those methods of investigation in a bit more detail, so if we take a look at the case study method, the case study method is particularly interesting in psychology because actually case studies are really, really powerful. One single case study can highlight a flaw within a whole theory or body of research in psychology. Okay, So just because the ideographic approach is focusing on one individual uh, unique being, doesn't mean that it can't undermine a whole area of nomothetic approach to psychology. Okay? If we think back to year one and think of the memory topic, you may have encountered uh, Patient KF that was written up in a report by Shalis and Warrington. Now, Shalis and Warrington examined the case of Patient KF, who was a man who had experienced a motorbike accident, and his short-term forgetting of auditory information was much more significant than his forgetting of visual information, which suggested to them that the short-term memory must consist of multiple components, highly likely that there's one for visual and there's one for auditory information. If we think about the, the multi-store model of memory uh, by Atkinson and Schifrin, which was a really established theory at the time, um, the, pa the case of patient KF, so an ideographic piece of research, completely undermined the model of memory uh, by Atkinson and Schifrin because actually that research suggested that actually there isn't just one short-term memory component. There are multiple, and therefore the multi-store model of memory might not be correct. So ideographic research is really, really important because a single case study can highlight a major limitation or flaw within a whole area of research, in this case, the multi-store model. Let's do the same for the nomothetic approach. Let's look at some examples of the nomothetic approach. In terms of the methods of investigation used there, you've got things like experiments, correlational research, psychometric testing, and so forth. Uh, and the nomothetic approach, the main aim of it is to be scientific and apply general findings to other, other people and other groups of people, okay? Now, the question on the screen says what approaches take a nomothetic approach, and there are many, so let's look at a few examples. Let's start with a biological approach. Now, biological psychologists typically take a nomothetic approach when explaining a whole range of psychologi psychological disorders, things like obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, and so forth. And the reason it's nomothetic is because they pinpoint a biological factor, for example, neurotransmitters that are responsible for the disorder, things like serotonin and dopamine, and then they use biological therapies to treat those patients, so they're applying actually the idea that neurotransmitters are the cause of a uh, psychopatholo psychopathological disorder like OCD and depression and they're then applying that to groups of people and treating them with drugs things like SSRIs okay let's take another example if we think about the behavior approach in psychology uh, behaviorists people like Pavlov and Skinner used experiments on animals to establish laws like classical and operant conditioning that they then generalized to non-human uh, participants and, and to sort of humans and non-humans okay uh, so therefore, they're applying actual laws that we find in animals to humans, which is particularly interesting. So a different example there. And if we think about a third example, we've already mentioned the cognitive approach. But cognitive psychologists, people like Atkinson and Schifrin, develop the multi-store model because they believe they can apply that to everyone. Okay. So there we can see how just three of the key approaches, your behaviorists, your biologists, and your cognitive uh, psychologists, all take typically a nomothetic approach. Okay. 
But what's particularly interesting, and the reason that the ideographic and nomothetic approach is a debate, is because while the cognitive approach, for example, might generally take a nomothetic approach, it doesn't always, as we've just illustrated a moment ago. So if we take a look at the cognitive approach again in just a little bit more detail, although the approach is trying to establish a general law, like the multi-store model, in relation to memory, they also do use other ideographic pieces of research, the case study by uh, Shalis and Warrington, or Patient HM by Corkin. So they actually also do borrow aspects of the ideographic approach to provide evidence for and against different theories. So what's really, really key, and you'll see highlighted in the orange square on the screen, is that although we can look at the different approaches and sort of consider whether they are generally nomothetic or ideographic, many of the approaches actually adopt elements of both, and that's really, really key. And that's what makes this quite an interesting debate in psychology. So there we have it. If we now look at the types of questions that could come up, starting with a multiple choice question, because even in year two psychology, you can still get multiple choice questions. So which of the following statements best describes a nomothetic approach? Is it A, studying an individual uh, by formulating general laws? B, studying an individual and not formulating general laws? C, studying a large group and formulating general laws? Or D, studying a group and not formulating? Um, clearly, it's not going to be the individual, so it's not A or B, because that's actually the ideographic approach. And it's not D, because we know that actually the real key to the uh, the nomothetic approach in psychology is to create general laws. So that arrives us at the correct answer of C there, okay? Let's look at some other questions. So a short answer question might just be simply explain what is meant by the terms ideographic and nomothetic for four marks. We're going to take a look at this applied question in a moment because it's particularly tricky. So a prison psychologist used an ideographic approach to study offending. He asked two offenders to record their thoughts about their childhood and their offending behaviour in a journal over the period of four weeks. Qualitative analysis of these journals showed that the offenders often thought about sad childhood events and believed that their childhood experiences had influenced their offending. Findings from ideographic research like the uh, study described above are often used as the basis of other investigations. Explain how the researcher might develop the above investigation by taking a nomothetic approach. Particularly tricky question. And then in the, uh, the latter part of this webinar, we're going to look at this essay question, discuss ideographic and nomothetic approaches to psychological investigation. Let's start with a nice and easy one just to get us sort of warmed up, okay? Uh, so explain what's meant by the terms here. You, no reason why you can't actually bring in the origin of the word. So I would simply approach this by saying the term ideographic originates from the Greek, that should say, word idios, meaning own, and refers to an approach where psychologists focus on individual uh, individuals using qualitative research methods like case studies. So I brought in the example there just to make sure I pick up that second mark. The term nomothetic comes from the Greek word nomos, meaning law, and refers to an approach that tries to establish general laws on large groups of people. Nomothetic approaches typically use quantitative methods like experiments, correlational research, etc. So I've just supplemented that definition just with an example, just to make sure I'm picking up all of the marks available there. Okay, So nice, easy question. Let's come on to this tricky application question. We'll read for it one more time. So it says there that a prison psychologist used an ideographic approach to study offending. He asked two offenders to record their thoughts about their childhood uh, and offending behaviour in a journal over the period of four weeks. Qualitative analysis of the journal showed that the offenders thought about sad childhood events and believed that their childhood experiences had influenced their offending. Findings from ideographic research, like the study described above, are often used as the basis of other investigations. Explain how they might develop that investigation by taking a nomothetic approach. One of the trickiest questions I've seen in the issues and debate sections. So let's see how we might tackle that, thinking in quite a logical order. Now, in terms of this application question, I would say this is one of those application questions where you're required to go beyond the STEM. So you can't really use too much from the STEM itself, but you do need to sort of use your own knowledge about the approaches to answer this question. So I said here, here's a model answer to this. To develop the above investigation, using a nomothetic approach, the researchers would need to test a larger sample of offenders in order to establish a general law of behaviour. So I started really with a definition, OK? Just using my knowledge of what we mean by nomothetic. By taking a nomothetic approach, the research is likely to use one of the following methods, for example, an experiment, correlational research, or even psychometric testing. So again, still at this early stage, just bringing in what my knowledge is of the uh, the nomothetic approach to investigation. Now, by doing that, that allows me to then really tap into the applied part of this question and get my final marks in the next statement. So in the above investigation, the researcher might provide all of the offenders within a particular prison with a questionnaire that assesses their early childhood experiences and the type of crime, for example, violent crime. The researchers could then carry out a correlation and analysis to see if there's a relationship between sad childhood events and violent crime. If the researcher finds that there is a, co a correlation, either positive or negative, he will be able to generate a law of offending behaviour, which he could then generalise to the wider sort of uh, 
prisoner population, so to speak. Okay. Now you can see here I've tackled that question. It's a very, very difficult question, but I've really started with a definition, um, brought in an example, and then used that example to really facilitate the application part of that question. Okay. So if you get stuck on an application question like this, try to think of it in quite a logical step-by-step -step process in terms of what is nomothetic, what do nomothetic researchers do? Okay, now with that in mind, how am I going to apply it to that scenario? So there you have it. Now onto the essay question. So let's imagine you did get an essay question that was discussed ideographic and nomothetic approaches to psychological investigation, 16 marks. As we always say, discuss really does just mean outline and evaluate. You've only got around the 20 minutes mark to write a question like this. So you're looking in the region of about 175 words for knowledge, AO1, and 325-ish words thereabouts for your AO3, your discussion, your evaluation part. Now with that in mind, um, as I mentioned in issues debates, I would start with a small introduction just to outline what the debate aspect of it is. Why is it psychologists agree or disagree about these different approaches? Now, what I'm going to do in this particular webinar is actually take a different structure. I normally start with all my O1 followed by all of my O3. I just want to show you this evening that actually it's perfectly plausible uh, to structure your essay in a different way, just to show you that you're not confined to one rigid structure. So for tonight's essay, I'm going to actually start with actually outlining what is nomothetic and bring an example from the biological approach. I'm not going to go on to ideographic, actually. What I'm then going to do is bring in the first of my evaluation points. So I'm going to talk about the scientific nature of the nomothetic approach and why that's seen as a good thing. And linked to that, I'm then going to develop that further and actually say, well, the biological psychologists actually use a nomothetic approach to treatment and treat disorders like OCD, depression, and that's also a good thing. So that's going to be my starting point for this particular essay. I'm not going to go into ideographic until the second half. Now, with that in mind, let's see what the introduction looks like, okay? Just to show you that it can be written, in this case, in about the sort of 65, 70 words mark, because we're only doing half of the introduction or half of the AO1 at this stage. So I've said there, what is the uh, ultimate aim of psychological research? Is it to discover universal laws of human behaviour? Or is it to develop an in-depth understanding of unique cases? This is the central argument in the debate between the ideographic and nomothetic approaches to psychological investigation. Now, psychologists who take a nomothetic approach are concerned with establishing general laws based on the study of large groups and use statistical quantitative techniques to analyse their data. This means that experiments, correlations, psychometric tests and other quantitative methods are favoured among nomothetic researchers. Biological psychologists take a nomothetic approach when explaining psychological disorders like OCD and they typically pinpoint biological factors like neurotransmitters that are responsible for the disorder in order to then treat the patients. Okay, Really nice concise introduction, got the key terms in there, got the examples in there, so everything you need. We then said if we went back to our plan we're going to then actually bring in two strengths of the nomothetic approach, talking about the scientific nature of it and the application to treatments. Okay. Now with that in mind, let's look at what that might look like as two burger paragraphs. So we might say the nomothetic approach is considered as scientific. That's my starting point. The use of experimental quantitative methods, controlled measurement and the ability to predict behaviour are all strengths of the nomothetic approach. This matters because controlled methods allow other psychologists to replicate the research, so a key term from research methodology, yeah, to examine the reliability of the findings, which has helped psychology establish itself as a scientific discipline. Really simple point, nice and concise there, but ultimately very, very effective. Building on from that, we then go into our second one. Furthermore, because the nomothetic approach is seen as scientific, it's useful pre for predicting and controlling behaviour. For example, biological psychologists take a nomothetic approach when explaining obsessive compulsive disorder and claim that OCD is caused by high levels of dopamine and low levels of serotonin, and therefore drug therapies are developed on the basis of nomothetic research to work by readdressing that biological imbalance. And again, this matters because drugs like SSRIs, I should have defined it there, so selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, are used to treat OCD and increase the availability and the uptake of serotonin. That reduces the anxiety associated with OCD which helps to improve the lives of people suffering from this condition as a result of that nomothetic approach. Okay, Now you can see there two really, really nice paragraphs. I've separated them out just to go through them with you, but you can see actually you could bring that all in together as one nice paragraph as I've done on the screen there. Now, before moving into the sort of the next outline of the ideographic approach, actually, there's nothing to stop you including what I would call a nice linking paragraph, which brings us into uh, the next part of our essay. So you'll see at the bottom of the screen, I've said, however, drug treatments aren't successful for all patients. OK, and some psychologists argue that other therapies like CBT that focus on the individual might provide a better understanding of complex psychological disorders. 
So you can see how I've just literally thrown in a couple of sentences there to link me into the next part of my essay, which is going to be outlining the ideographic approach to research. Okay. Now, the reason I've structured this particular essay in this format is because now I can actually flip my argument and say, well, actually, if the nomothetic approach is seen as scientific, the ideographic approach is seen as unscientific, and that is therefore a limitation of that approach. Okay. Uh, I would then finish with that example we used earlier, that although the ideographic approach isn't seen as scientific, the case study method, which is an ideographic technique, is so, so powerful that it actually generates more research and therefore contributes to, to science in a different way. Okay. I don't usually conclude essays, but I'll show you a conclusion today just to show you actually what a nice separate evaluation paragraph might look like as a conclusion. Uh, therefore, if you don't remember these particular points, you might remember that conclusion instead. So I've gone on. I'm now going to actually outline the ideographic approach. And I'm going to say the ideographic approach takes this stance. So we're following on from that idea that other treatments might be better. Uh, and an ideographic researcher emphasises the unique personal experience of human nature. This means they actually favour qualitative methods such as case studies and unstructured interviews that allow an in-depth insight into human behaviour. There's my outline of the ideographic approach. Would have been nice to provide an example, but ran out of time for this particular essay and the words. Therefore, I've kept it short and kept it really sweet in this case. Okay. Let's look at just one of these evaluation paragraphs now for the ideographic because you're going to already get the idea of unscientific because we've encountered that for scientific for the nomothetic approach. So let's see how we might structure an evaluation paragraph for case studies. What we might say here is there are numerous studies or numerous strengths for taking an ideographic approach. And the case study is a really powerful tool for evaluating psychological theories. For example, the case of patient KF by Shalis and Whiting exposed a limitation of the multi multistore model by providing evidence that the short-term memory comprises of two different components and not one as stipulated by Atkinson and Schifrin. Consequently, a single case study can generate further research into a particular area like memory, which contributes to the development of new theories and highlights the strength of the ideographic approach to psychological research. Okay? On the screen now you can see the entire essay. Okay. So what you'll see is the parts in yellow are the knowledge. So they're not all at the top this time. I've separated them out. And the green parts are our evaluation. Uh, this essay is coming at quite a high number of words. So I normally recommend around 500. We've ended up at about the 580 in this case. And that's because I've included an additional evaluation paragraph. That's not necessarily required. But I just wanted to show you what a conclusion to this particular essay might look like. Holt argues that an ideographic and nomothetic distinction is actually a pointless and false distinction. As many approaches actually really take on both. We saw that earlier with the cognitive approach. For example, while cognitive psychologists typically take a nomothetic approach to create general laws, they also take advantage of the ideographic approach when using case studies to provide evidence for or against a particular theory. Therefore, it could be argued that the distinction between the ideographic and nomothetic approach is meaningless and that psychologists can actually use both methods depending upon the nature of their inquiry. Um, that is in its right uh, at a conclusion, but it's also a separate evaluation paragraph. Okay, So you could use that as one of your evaluation paragraphs, which is the point we're at now that a lot of psychologists just disagree with this distinction and, and think that we should actually just use both methods of study uh, depending upon what is more relevant to that particular question. So there we have it. it. had a run through. We talked about what the ideographic and nomothetic approaches are. We've looked at how to structure answers to different application and essay style questions. Hope you found that useful. For more videos, do check out our YouTube channel by searching for Tutor2U and join us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and hope to see you at a future event soon. Thank you.